It's me, Undead Viking. I want to talk to you about a game that I have been playing a lot of. It is called Cabaret. Uh, Cabaret is a trick-taking card game, and like a lot of you, I'm assuming, uh, you may have grown up playing a lot of trick-taking games, and I definitely did with my family. Uh, we were big fans of games of things like Euchre, or Hearts, or Spades, or, you know, what have you, and uh, we enjoyed it a great deal. And I really uh, kind of liked um, this genre of game, uh, like games like... Uh, Chimera and Diamonds, things like that, uh, games that I, I really enjoyed. And um, I'm always excited to try out a new trick-taking game just because of the fact that it, it, it's, it's history uh, as far as with me and, and what I've played before. And also I always just like the, the new take on, on, on this like classic uh, basic mechanism, if you will. So I'm going to show you how to play Cabaret. It isn't uh, very straightforward, if you will. It has some cool little uh, cleverness to it. Um, and then we'll come back here and I'll tell you more uh, about why I dig it. All right, cool. All right, this is exactly what you get in your game of Cabaret. You get a big giant deck of cards, you get these mime cards, and you get these agent cards. In the beginning of the game, each person is going to get one of these agent cards. It's going to have a different color and a different type of card that you're going to be looking for to get and take in tricks because those are the only cards that you can use to score points. And so you have live music, you have acting, you have dancing, juggling, magic, and singing. But most often, as far as when we played, we just pretty much went by the color, and I think that's the whole goal anyway. So each person is going to get one of those randomly given to them, and then they are going to get three of these mime cards, and I'll explain those to you, that those cards in just a moment. And they're also going to get 12 of these cards. Let me count 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, so you're going to get 12 of these cards, and you're going to have all those different colors or suits, if you will, and with these numbers. So each one of these cards is going to have a value here, and that's like if you're familiar with trick-taking games, uh, the high card normally will win a trick. Of course, there's a little, little uh, uh, cleverness as far as this game is concerned. I'll explain that in just a quick moment. And there's also going to be these stars on there. You can see there's some stars that are black here, and there are stars that are white here. That's very important. Um, if you have this color, say you you had um, the acting as the cards that you could claim as the winning cards, you can see that these stars, um, the white stars, are ones that you can actually score as positive points. You can see these, the black are stars you'll score as negative points, but that would be only if you had the agent card that was purple that when you, when you started off the game. Now, you can kind of see where here we have a 12 that has negative. So like a 12 is a high number and you're probably gonna take a trick with that, right? So how do you prevent yourself from getting negative points? Well, I'm gonna explain that to you in just a quick moment. So what will happen is one person will lead with one of these suits. They're gonna go through their hand, they're gonna play a card, they're gonna see what happens. And when they lead with the suit, a lot of games, with tricking games, you have to follow that suit. Like, if I play purple, you got to play purple. But this is not that type of game. In Cabaret, what you have to do is you have to play a suit that has not been played yet. So if I played this 8, the next person to my left would have to play something else that isn't that color. So maybe they could play this 12. Or, you know, and but it wasn't purple. And what, then the third person is going to have to, like, avoid both the blue and the, the the purple and the green, and so maybe they would play this blue. And then the next person would have to play a yellow, and the next person would have to play the black, and so on and so forth. And if you can't play a suit because you don't have it in your hand, you have to play one of these mime cards. And the mime cards have a value of zero, so it's very obvious they cannot win a trick. And you will notice that every single one of the mime cards has two positive points on it and they will score regardless you know when you when you if you have them at the end of the game so it is very important the mime cards um if as long as you can hold on to them or gather them they are like free points you don't have to worry about whether or not they match up with your agent color so as, as trick taking games go it is exactly how you think so if let me just grab one of each color here and so you can kind of see how this works one two three four I need black, and did I get one, two, three, four, five, 
I'm missing one color. Oh, there's a red one. There you go. So, so you have these. So if this was the situation, those were the six cards that played. Obviously, the green 12 would win because they're the highest number and they would take it. And maybe this wouldn't be a big deal if you took that because if you weren't the green and let's say I was the, blue, the purple, I would take this trick and I'd get this eight here worth four points and I'd be really happy about that because of the fact that I'd score those points for the stars at the end and so that's how why that would be good now if i was if i had a green if i was a magic agent i wouldn't want to take the trick because then i would just basically have given myself two negative points by doing so so now if um so that would happen now let's just for the sake of an argument let's say maybe nobody had a yellow and they had to put in a mime card like so and also for the sake of an argument let's say then instead of that eight that was played, we have uh, a, a 12 as well. So what we're gonna end up here is we're going to end up with a tie. So we're going to have both a 12 purple and a 12 green, like so. Now, when this trick is, this, these are six cards played in the trick, what's gonna happen is because we have a tie at the top, these two cards are taken out and are not considered for the win and so then we go to the next possible card, and in which case would be this 10. And the person that had played the 10 would then take the trick because the two 12s had been canceled out. Now, if we had another 10, then that 10, and like if this was a 10 here instead of a two, those two would cancel out and we'd have leave with this four, and then the four would win the trick. If somehow you keep matching and matching and matching, and there's like, and then it, it's a draw because you have six cards, and all six cards uh, like have a match. Um, then in that case, nobody wins the trick, and it's just set aside, and nobody gets to claim it. So it'll continue playing like so, and you'll continue uh, like till everybody gets through after twelve rounds are played, because at that point. Since you are, you know, playing the mime cards, the person who plays the mime card is going to have an extra card in their deck, and so they'll have more options available to them the next time somebody leads. But eventually, um, you're going to run out of cards that you can play because you don't draw any new cards because, uh, you know, it, you, after you've gotten your 12, you don't draw any more new. And after... Um, 12 rounds and somebody's going to be out of cards at that point it just it it it, it, it could happen that you know it, it isn't but um it's it's you know uh it, it's you know it's a very real possibility but um at that point then you uh total up the points for the cards that you took not your mime cards at that point you total up the points for these cards according to the stars and according to your agent color and then you reshuffle and you play again you do that for three rounds and then after three rounds of totaling up all the points, then at that point, you total up the points for your mime cards. And whoever has, you know, then you add those to the top. And then whoever has the most points after three rounds of doing so uh, will win the game of Cabaret. It is a very tricky uh, uh, trick-taking, <laughs> very tricky trick-taking card game. has a lot of cool little things that are going on uh, throughout it, and there's a lot of uh, think and outthink. Um, it's just, it's one of those classic games that I, I, I grew up playing trick-taking games, and, and I've really enjoyed some of these uh, new, like, designer, if you will, uh, trick-taking games that people have come up with. And uh, this is a uh, very welcome uh, addition uh, to that genre for me. But let me talk about more about that uh, in my conclusion, and I'll do that uh, right now. All right, thank you. Uh, you should have a really good idea of how the, the rules of, of Cabaret work. Um, the really nice thing I like about the game is that, like, you know, it's it's one of those games that, like, yes, the rules are pretty quickly, and you really you, you, you realize how to play the game, and you, and you know how the game uh flows, if you will, uh, very quickly, right out of the box. But it does take a while for you to actually realize the different strategies and the different things that you need to do. And even those kind of get picked up pretty quickly as well. And after that, then it is time to start refining uh, your strategy when you pick up your cards. And that's probably like the most fun part of the game for me, actually, is like getting those first 12 cards. Uh, you look at it and then you have that, you hear that little groan from the other side of the table. You know, it's it's like when you, uh, when you, when you played Hearts when you were younger. And, um, like, you'd get all the cards in your hand, and you'd be sitting there looking at it, and, um, 
you you inevitably have like you know like that girl and like oh look at this garbage I got dealt and stuff like that and so you, you I, I enjoy um, that that moment of exhilaration you know when you when you pick up your cards and you're putting them in the different suits and whatever and I, it's a whole aspect of, of trick taking games that I, I really enjoy. It, it, what's really cool about this game is that it's it's weird. It's like you have this color that you want to score points on, but you don't want high numbers with it because the 11s and 12s have negative points on them, but like the 10s are great because they have the five, the, you probably may not see it, but all the 10s in these numbers, they have the five stars on the side. And so you kind of treasure these in your own color, uh, but you hate them, um, you know, in, in the other color, uh, so to speak, because like you, you kind of like wait um, with like, you know, 11s and 12s in, in your own are, are bad, you know, and 10s are good, you know, because you're trying to like wait. And, and as with all trick-taking games, um, like when you go last, it's kind of like it's both it's good because of the fact that you can see what everybody else has played before you. But also, but in this game, it's tough because at that point, you know, they've used up a lot of the different colors that maybe if you had a, a card that you could have used before, you know, now is taken off, you know, and so you're kind of hoping as it goes around the table that like, if you have like three or four cards you think might be working and you're watching as your options dwindle as other people go and you're kind of like hoping uh, that person, please just play a mime card, you know, don't have a green, don't have a green, don't have a green, oh good, you don't have a green and you can play your green card and take the trick if it's something you want and stuff like that. And then of course there's those moments when you get railroaded into having to play a card in your hand even though you didn't want to because it's the only color of that card that you have and that's the only option that you have. And, and so for all those reasons and like, it's like playing your optimal every single hand it's like that's why i like trick taking games it's like every every hand is kind of a quick decision but each hand is really really important and, and it's just it just goes back to that whole process of this type of game and this type of genre of game um that i've always always really enjoyed and um you know and it's it's highly interactive um it's you know uh, very visual and, and and very very uh um reactionary you know like people when they they play you know it's just like and the mannerisms and everything like that it just kind of like as i you know as i've referenced in other games uh, reviews of, of trick taking games it takes me back to my my, my grandparents table uh, in washburn north dakota where we'd play these games constantly and i can just i can picture you know the family members doing the same uh actions and what have you and and and, and going through the process so um if you like trick taking games i think you're gonna love this one uh you know like i said it's got some uh real uh, funkiness to it and it, you know it has uh it definitely uh spins your brain around a little bit and and um you know solving that puzzle uh each and every turn of, of like figuring out how you're going to use those 12 new cards uh that you just got to the best of your ability um is, is is a heck a heck heck of a lot of fun so there you go that is cabaret um if you have any questions about the game please ask away i'll answer those to the best of my ability um and as always until next time this is undead viking and i'm telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day all right bye-bye